chapter and it's hopefully going to be pretty quick. I don't know. I know how rambly I can get sometimes. Um, but the last thing we need to learn is about percent yield. So why do we even need to bother with percent yield? Well, there's this funny little thing called nature. And nature rarely works out as we expect it to. And so, yes, a chemical reaction, doing the calculation, uh, working out the stoichiometry might say, oh, well, we're supposed to make X amount of grams of this particular product. But in nature, when we actually do that reaction, maybe certain compounds don't line up right, maybe they don't hit with enough energy, something happens to where not all of the product possible is actually formed. And so what we do is we do a comparison of the theoretical yield, which the theoretical yield is calculated using stoichiometry, using the limiting reactant, it is the maximum amount of product that's possible if everything in the reaction goes exactly as it's supposed to, everything hits with the right amount of energy, everything hits when, you know, facing the right direction and the right orientation, everything works perfect, then you get your theoretical yield. Well, in the real world, we have what we call the actual yield. And this is the measured amount that you form in an actual lab reaction. And it is always less than, and every once in a while you might get something that's equal to the theoretical yield. It is never, ever, ever more than the theoretical yield. So the actual yield will never be more than the theoretical yield. It's not going to happen. It is not possible. The whole law of conservation of mass states that. So the formula that you use to calculate percent yield is just like you calculate the percentage of anything. You take the part, which in this case is the actual yield, over the whole thing, which in this case is the theoretical yield, and you multiply it by 100 to make it a percentage. Um, and then all I have is just an example problem that I thought we could use to work this out. So we've got this great reaction where you produce, uh, it's the commercial production of arsenic, probably, maybe, hopefully, for the use in uh, rat poisons and not for anything worse than that, um, from the production of arsenic from its oxide, arsenic-3 oxide, or you could call this diarsenic trioxide, depending on what naming rules you subscribe to. Um, and it just works by reacting it with carbon. Um, so the first example I want us to do is if 8.87 grams of arsenic... Uh, three oxides, we have 8.87 grams, is used in the reaction and 5.33 grams of, or of arsenic is formed, what is the percent yield? Now, obviously you can recognize this as a percent yield question because the question says, what is the percent yield? But if it wasn't as obvious and you were just given these two amounts and you're going, okay, well, what do I do with these amounts? Well, you're given an amount of a reactant and you're given an amount of a product. We weren't given an amount of the other reactant, which means we get to assume that this is the excess reactant. If you're not given an amount of, of a particular reactant, then you get to assume that it is the excess reactant. So this is not a limiting reactant question. I'll do in the review video um, an example of putting all of this together, you know, having to do the limiting reactant and a percent yield calculation and, you know, put it all together there. But here we just want to focus on percent yield. So what we're going to do, we're given an amount of reactant and we're given, it says 5.33 grams of arsenic is produced. I could actually put in the word actually because this amount of arsenic is actually produced, which means this 5.33 grams is our actual yield. Well, what that means is that we need to calculate the theoretical yield. If you go back in the video a bit, you'll see that the theoretical yield is calculated from the limiting reactant. So that's what we're going to do first. 8.87 grams of the arsenic-3 oxide. Try to draw as straight of a line as possible really hard to draw a straight line on this thing. Um, and then we're just going to go through the typical stoichiometry of grams to grams because you want to make sure that the units on your theoretical yield match what was given to you in your actual yield. And since our actual yield was given to us in grams, then we have to go all the way to grams of arsenic. So uh, pause this, work this out, just get to grams of arsenic, and then play whenever you're ready to go. So the formula mass, the molar mass of arsenic-3 oxide is 
four grams. Check my math on that. I hope I'm right. If not, let me know. Um, for every mole, that is a two, I swear. Um, and then now that we're in moles of arsenic uh, three oxide, we can use our mole ratio from the equation up here. So for every two moles of arsenic oxide, uh, we're going to get four moles of arsenic. And then on the periodic table, you'll see that one mole of arsenic has a mass of 74.92 grams. Now we get to cross stuff out, which as you guys know is always my favorite part. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm just crossing out stuff that's the same on the top and bottom. And then once I've crossed out my units, I can look at my numbers. And I see here I can reduce this 4 and 2 just to make the math a little simpler. Um, and so my theoretical yield here is going to be 6.72 grams of arsenic. This 6.72, this is how many grams of arsenic we would produce if all of this arsenic 3 oxide reacted perfectly with the excess carbon. Unfortunately, according to our statement, that did not occur. So to find the percent yield, I'm just abbreviating here, percent yield, you take the actual yield, which is 5.33 grams, divide it by the theoretical yield, 6.72 grams, and then to make this a percentage, you multiply by 100. And that works out to be, incorrect sig fig, 79.3%. And then I got one more example here for you guys. And that is if 67 grams of carbon is used up in a different reaction, so we have 67 grams of carbon used up in a different reaction, and 425 grams of arsenic is produced, calculate the percent yield. So same situation, but now we're starting with the carbon instead of the arsenic three oxide. But it is the same situation, the same procedure. You start with the amount of reactant. This is how much of the arsenic was produced. So this again is my actual yield and I need to calculate my theoretical yield. So I know that the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. And in my equation I see that my mole ratio is for every three moles of carbon I'm going to get four moles of arsenic and then each mole of arsenic is going to have a mass of 74.92 grams arsenic. And then get to cross stuff out. And we don't really have any numbers that, I mean, we can kind of reduce the 4 and the 12, but that's 0.01. Let's just go ahead and keep it like it is and plug it in. And we end up with 557. But... We're limited right here to two sig figs. So this 557 actually becomes 560 grams of arsenic, which is our theoretical yield. So to find our percent yield, we're going to take the actual yield, which is that 425 grams, divide it by the actual yield of 560 grams, and then multiply this whole thing by 100. And that is going to be equal to, it works out to like 75.89 some odd percent. But again, we're only allowed two sig figs, so 76% it is. And that is all that I have for just the introduction to percent yield. If you need to see more example problems, I've got a couple of other example videos on percent yield. So happy hunting. See y'all later.